This question is asked in gate 22 of electronics. This is from network subjects and you may say it is from the theorem topic, including the fundamental and theorems. The question is, <coughs> a linear two-port network is shown in figure A. This is figure A. An ideal DC voltage source of 10 volt is connected across port 1. This is your 10 volts. A variable resistance R is connected across port 2, this one. As R is varied, the major voltage at port 2 is shown in the figure B as a V2 versus minus I2 plot. So when this R is varying, so the variation of V2 and minus I2 is shown in this diagram, okay, this graph. Okay, note that V2 equals to 5 volts and I2 equal to 0. So V2 is 5, I2 equal, that means this point they are saying. V2 is 4, I2 is minus 4. So this one, I2 is minus 4 and V2 is 4. This, this, this point they are saying, this point, okay. When the variable register R at port 2 is replaced by load shown in figure C, that means if you are replacing this R with this one, okay. So what is the current I2 in milliampere? This is what is the current we need to find. <coughs> Student who have learned the uh, source uh, voltage current characteristics, you can easily solve this. Uh, okay, otherwise within one minute of time, let me just give you some overview and then we can easily approach the problem. So the thing is something like this. Suppose, for example, you have a source, a practical voltage source. Uh, okay, the source voltage VTH and the source resistance RTH. Let's say this node is A and this node is B. And across this, you have connected some variable load. Okay. So the voltage is VL and the load current is IL, let's say. <clears throat> if I ask you to write the KVL equation, what do you get? VTH minus IL RTH minus of VL equals to 0. So your VL is equals to minus of RTH into IL plus VTH. If you compare this equation with Y equals to MX plus C, okay. So, uh, you know, this resembles a straight line having slope minus RTH. If I ask you to plot this line, so by taking this axis as VL, this axis as IL, how does the line will look like? So, uh, one thing is confirmed like the slope of this line is basically minus of RTH because M value if I compare, this is minus RTH. So basically you need to have the coordinate of these two points. So if I make, if I make VL equals to zero, then what is IL? So if I make VL equal to zero, so your IL is basically VTH by RTH. Similarly, if I make IL equal to zero, so what is your VL? If I make IL equal to zero, your VL is basically VTH. So these are two points, okay? So current is zero, then voltage is VTH, current is 0, voltage is VTH. So x-axis value is 0 and y-axis value is VTH. This is the coordinate of this point. Similarly, what is this point coordinate? So here the value of current IL is VTH by RTH and uh, the voltage is 0. So the same uh, circuits, okay, so I have written the equations. And if I'm drawing its characteristic, this is what its characteristics. So this much of data, I know like while teaching the source uh, in class, we used to handle this. Okay. So, uh, okay. So this data is enough to proceed now. So what is the logic in this case is, so in this case, my target is I'll be replacing the network, which is left to this AB terminal by the Thermin model. So any network, which is containing uh, many register sources can be replaced by its Thermin model. That means the network to the left of AB can be replaced by practical voltage source having VTH and RTH are in series. So how do you get the value of it? Because the point is at the end they are saying this R has to be replaced by this one. So at the end what is going to happen is at the end this is the situation. The situation is you have this VTH and you have this RTH and across AB point, so this load is connected, which is in figure C. And figure C is nothing but a 1 kilo ohm register is in series with a voltage source of value 10 volts. Okay. And this is what is the direction of the current I2. So they are asking, what is this current I2? That's, that's what the situation is. This is RTH. This is VTH. 
and this is what you're supposed to get. That's what the question is. If you see the question, what they're saying at the end, when the variable resistance R at port replaced by load swelling figure C. So this R I'm removing and I'm connecting this one. So the circuit will look like this. So the network to the left of AB replaced by this VTH RTS series combinations and at the load, I'm connecting this figure C. So, so here you need to get the value of I2. Okay, so basically, what is the problem? If we know the VTH and RTH, there is no issue to get the value of I2. Isn't it? Okay. And here in the questions, if you see, okay, so I2 is this direction. So this direction current is minus I2. There is no problem. In my analysis, I am using IL notation. So here if you compare, so this minus of I2 is equivalent to IL, you can say, because IL is, uh, you know, going away from node A. If I use the same notations, minus of I2 is equivalent to IL. So by comparing, okay, what I'll be comparing? I'll be comparing these two characteristics. So one second. Yeah. Now let us compare these two figure. If you compare these two figure, this and this. So is it possible to get the value of VTH, RTH? Yes, we can easily get. So how do you get? So this point coordinate, okay, this point coordinate is X axis value is zero and Y axis value is five. Similarly, this point coordinate. So of course this line is not intersecting the real axis here, but okay, any one more point is given. So the X axis value is four and the Y axis value is also four. So from these two points, is it not possible to get the slope of this? So slope is Y2 minus Y1. So four minus five, this much of uh, Y2 is in volts and uh, then X2 minus X1. X2 is four and uh, X1 is zero. So four minus zero, this much of milliampere. So this is coming minus one by four volt by milli okay this is in kilo units okay so what is this this is minus slope is what slope is minus rth we said so from this line we are getting the slope slope is coming minus 1 by 4 okay so minus of rth is equals to minus 1 by 4 kilo ohms so your rth is basically 1 by 4 kilo ohms which is basically 1000 by 4 ohms so RTH, I can say this is basically 250 ohms. So from the given data, one thing is clear that this value of RTH, this is basically 250 ohms. Then one more comparison uh, we'll do. So this point coordinate is 0, VTH and here it is given 0, 5. So very straightforward, I can say your VTH value is nothing but equals to 5 volts only. By comparison, this point is 0, 5. So this 5 is nothing but equals to VTH. So you got the value of VTH, this is 5 volts. Now see how simple this question is. Now can't you find the uh, current I2 in these circuits? Yes, very simple. So what we can do is in this case, so the, this data is done. So what I can do is, so if this direction current is I2, so let us say this current is IX, right? And IX is equals to minus of I2 or I2 is equals to minus of IX. So what do you get? So what do you get in the sense, so, okay, otherwise let me take this to other piece. Yeah. So here, Ix is equals to 5 minus 10 divided by 250 plus 1000, 1 kilo means 1000, right? So this is what Ix. So 5 minus 10 is like this. Or, uh, you know, directly because we need I2, I2 I can say 10 minus 5 divided by 250 plus 1000. So, which is coming 5 by 1250. So, what is this 5 by 1250? So, 5 by 1250, you know, 5, uh, if you cut it, so this is coming 5, 2, 2, 5 is, uh, yeah, 2, 5, 5, 5 and 0, yeah. So this is coming 1 by 250. So I2 is equals to 1 by 250. So how much is this? So this is coming 4 into 10 is to power minus 3. Or I can say this I2 is equals to 4 milliamperes. Okay. So what is this answer then? So this answer is basically I2 is equals to 4 milliamperes. 
so very straightforward okay only thing is you should have the idea like this circuits can be replaced by its corresponding thermion model vth rth so the vth rth characteristic is like this so by comparison with the characteristic given we obtain the value of vth rth and the circuit is this one then we need i2 and i2 is equals to by writing a simple equations we are getting the answer is 4 milli amperes so yeah this is not a tough questions but yes you need to be good in the concept then only can answer this so the answer is 4 for this this question is asked in gate 22 of ec the question is from network subjects and from fundamental topic the given question is the current i in the circuit zone is dash okay so this is what the circuit given and in this circuit we are supposed to get this current i right and these are the options we have okay so how do you solve this question okay although there can be many approaches to solve these questions but one of the straightforward approach is this one so if i concentrate this node okay to this node this current is i known to me and this current is 10 h to power minus 3 ampere because if this is the current source and a register in series with this this register will not have any impact as far as this branch current is concerned so i know this branch current is i i know this branch current is 10 h to power minus 3 amperes and both of these currents are incoming so if i ask you what is this current so this current is definitely sum of this and this by kcl because if this and this currents are incoming so the outgoing current will be sum of this and this so we can express this particular current in terms of i now what you can do is you can write a kvl equation at this mass then that will give you the value of i okay so let us do that so if i concentrate this node okay so this branch current is i and this branch current is 1 milliampere because 10 h to power minus 3 ampere is equivalent to 1 milliampere so if this is i and this is 1 that means if i ask you what is this branch current so by kcl at this node so this branch current is i plus 1 okay the current is in milliampere units now now let us write the uh, kvl in this uh, uh, in in this mess if i write the kvl what do you get so 5 minus 2i minus 2 into i plus 1 equals to 0 okay so 5 minus 2i minus 2 into this current is i plus 1 equals to 0 now if i simplify this 5 is equals to 2i plus 2i plus 2 that means 4i is equals to 3 or i is equals to 3 by 4 3 by 4 in is equal to 0.75 but what is it it is in milliampere units so 0.75 milliampere is equivalent to 0.75 into 10 h to the power minus 3 amperes so this is what is the value of the unknown current i if you observe this is given in option b and b is the right answer for this questions so very straightforward questions you need hardly 20 to 30 seconds to answer this just one kcl at this node and then a kvl in the left side mesh is giving you the answer answer is 0.75 this question is asked in gate 22 of ece this question is from network subjects and from fundamental topic the question is consider the circuit shown in the figure the current i flowing through the 10 ohm register is dash okay so these are the options we have and in this circuit we are supposed to get this current i okay see by looking this circuit itself you can tell the answer is zero why because one of the fundamental principle that a non-zero amount of current can flow is there should be a return path for the current so if you say if this branch current is i if i is going this way then i should come back also but if i is going this way but in which path it will come and it never happens like you cannot say sir okay i is going this way this is flowing like this and again it is coming this way no it always follow a unique path so if i amount of current is going this way then i amount of current should come back somewhere else in some other path but that path is not here right so unless until there is no return path current cannot flow so definitely this answer is zero ampere this is just a common sense uh, questions and it needs only two to three seconds to answer this the answer is b for this this question is asked in gate 22 of ece this is from network subjects and related to the locus diagram concept or you can say if you have any basics of polar plot also you can easily answer this the question is for the circuit zone the locus of impedance z omega is plotted as omega increases from 0 to infinity the value of r and r to r okay so we have this circuits and this is the locus diagram of impedance z of j omega and these are the options so which option is satisfying the value of r and r2 for this uh, circuit with respect to this plot okay <clears throat> so let us take reference of two special frequency omega equal to zero and omega equals to infinite 
So first thing is at omega equal to 0. So you know very well z of c is given by 1 by j omega c. If I substitute omega equal to 0 and if I substitute omega equals to infinity, what is the behavior? Omega equal to 0 if I substitute, so this function is infinite, 1 by 0 is infinite. And if a impedance having value infinite, it works like open circuits. If I substitute omega equal to infinite, it is 1 by infinite, that is 0. So if the impedance is 0, that means it works like a short circuits. So now I'll be drawing these circuits at two special frequency at omega equal to 0 and omega equal to infinite. So at omega equal to 0, if I draw the circuits, so what is going to happen then? So this is your R1 and this is your R2 and then the capacitor is open circuits. So the capacitor is open circuit. This is R1, this is R2 and the capacitor is open circuits. And this impedance is what we are saying it is Z of J omega. If I observe what is this, this Z of J omega is nothing but equals to R1 plus R2. At what frequency? At omega equal to 0. But at omega equal to 0, what is the impedance? If you see this particular point, at omega equal to 0, the impedance value is 5. That means I can tell from here that R1 plus R2 is equals to 5. This is what one information we got. Similarly, if I am drawing the circuits at omega equals to infinite, so how does it look like? So at omega equal to infinite, this is your R1 and this is your R2 and capacitor is short circuited. So if the capacitor is sorted, so this is what the situations. So Z of J omega is nothing but equals to R1 here because R2 parallel with 0 is 0 itself. So this circuit is equivalent to uh, your R1, okay? And this is your short circuits because R2 parallel with 0 is 0. So this is what your uh, Z of J omega at frequency omega equals to infinite. Okay. So at omega equal to infinite, what is the impedance? At omega equal to infinite, the impedance is 2 because this point nothing but 2. So, so 2 is equals to R1. So we got the value of R1 equals to 2. And if you substitute the value of R1 equals to 2 here, okay. So what is the value of R2? So that means the value of R2 is 5 minus R1, R1 is 2, 5 minus 2 is equals to 3 kilo ohms, okay, because the resistance are in kilo ohms. So the value of R1 we got is 2 kilo ohms and the value of R2 we got is 3 kilo ohm. If you observe, so this is given in R1, 2 and R2, 3 is in option A, A is the right answer. So basically what we have done is uh, by using the property of capacitors at two special frequency 0 and infinite we have drawn the circuits one case we got the impedance value is r1 plus r2 at omega equal to 0 and from the plot we got that this impedance is nothing but 5 that means r1 plus r2 equals to 5 next at omega equal to infinite we have again draw the circuits whose impedance came to be r1 and this at omega equal to infinite this value is given as 2 so 2 is equals to r1 so r1 equals to 2 and by substituting here we got r2 equal to 3 so this is given option A. So A is the right answer for this question. So this is also a very easy question. It takes hardly one minute of time to give the answer. This question is asked in gate 22 of AC. This is from network subjects and from the AC circuit topic. The question is, consider the circuit shown in the figure with input VT in volts. The sinus allows steady state current IT flowing through the circuit is shown graphically where T is in seconds. The circuit element jet can be, okay, so if you see the options, capacitor of 1 farad, inductor of 1 henry, capacitor of root 3 farad, inductor of root 3 henry, okay. So basically, <coughs> instead of giving the expression of I of T, the waveform of I of T is given, okay, and VT is given, okay. So what we do is, so basically we are supposed to find what is this uh, nature of the impedance, whether it's a inductor capacitor, if it is so, what is its value? That's what we are supposed to tell in this question. What you can do is, so VT the source voltage, IT is the source current. So if I know VT and IT, I can get the overall impedance in from here, that is Z in. So if I get Z in, then Z in is equivalent to 1 plus Z. So by comparison, I can get what is Z. That's what is the logic. So for that, so let us try to get the expression of IT. So if you observe this, if this is what is the IT waveform is given. So here clearly I can tell IT is nothing but equals to what is the expression of this because the amplitude is 1 by root 2 minus 1 by root 2. So this is 1 by root 2 sine T because in uh, AC circuits, 
the frequency of the inputs will be same as any response quantity. So, if the input frequency is 1 here, sign T, right? So, any voltage current you find, it will be always 1 only. That's why I am writing a sign T. And here, one special point is given at T equals to pi by 4, the current is 0. So, what should I be, what should be the phase here? So, it should be T minus pi by 4. So, that if you substitute T equals to pi by 4, sign 0 will be 0. Isn't it? So, some people have doubts, should I substitute T equals to, you know, should I substitute T plus pi by 4? No, if you substitute T plus pi by 4, if you substitute T equal to pi by 4, it will be sign 2 pi by 4. Sign 2 pi by 4 is sign pi by 2, it will be 1 by root 2. So, you need at T equals to pi by 4, it should be definitely equal to uh, 0. So, current is, uh, you know, this is what is the expression. So, if I ask you what is the phasor notation of Vt, that is V is nothing but equals to 1 at an angle of 0 by taking positive sign as the reference. In the same logic, if I ask you what is the current phasor, I mean what is the phasor notation of this, so this will be 1 by root 2 at an angle of minus of pi by 4, again by taking the positive sign as the reference. We have to stick into one particular reference. So this is having the phasor notation 1 angle 0 and this is having the phasor notation 1 by root 2 at an angle of minus of pi by 4. So this is what is the source voltage and this is the source current. So, what is the total impedance Z in? Z in is nothing but equals to the source voltage by the source current. So, which is source voltage is 1 at an angle of 0 and the source current is 1 by root 2 at an angle of minus of pi by 4. So, this is equivalent to root 2 at an angle of pi by 4. So, if you again simplify this, root 2 at an angle of pi by 4 is root 2 cos pi by 4 plus J root 2 sin pi by 4. So, what is cos pi by 4? Cos pi by 4 is 1 by root 2. So, root 2 root 2 will cancel it is 1 plus again sin pi by 4 is also 1 by root 2. Root 2 will cancel it is j1. So, this is what you get in. So, z in is coming as 1 plus j1 and uh, if you compare here, so this happens to be 1 plus z, right? If I ask you what is this, you know, z in, so you can say 1 is in series with z. So, now you have to compare these two. So, what is the conclusion then? Z is equals to J1. Z is equals to J1. So, what is the possibility then? So, you know, like you are getting a plus J term. That means it is inductor definitely. If it is minus J, it is capacitor. So, it is inductor confirmed from this plus J term. And what is the impedance of the inductor? Impedance of inductor is J omega L. So, J omega L is J1 and omega equals to 1 the source frequency. That means J into 1 into L is equals to J1. So, what is the conclusion then? Then L is equals to 1 Henry. Very straightforward questions. So, the answer is the Z is nothing but it's an inductor whose value is 1 Henry which is given in option B. So, what we did in this case? So, we have just the, the only key point is the student may get confused to write these expressions. Once you are able to figure it out, this is what is the expressions. So, then uh, the net impedance we are getting which is coming 1 plus J1 and by comparing with 1 plus Z, we are getting the value of Z to be J1. So, which is indicating the presence of inductor because of plus J terms. So, inductor having impedance J omega L. So, if J omega L is compared with J1, L value is definitely equals to 1 Henry. So, the answer is 1 Henry for this which is a straightforward question. It needs hardly 30-40 seconds to answer.